you knew Ramdas personally? Yeah, I've been I've been with him um, a few times together. I'm very blessed in in his house and in Holy. Oh, uh, I revere Ramdas as well, very much so. In Neem Karoli Baba. Um, now, how would you describe who Ramdas is? You knowing him personally, like who who is this being? Why why do we love him so much? Why do I love him so much? Like how could you describe why Ramdas is so important for you? See, Ram Das is this embodiment of pure love. When I when I came to Ram Das, when I was invited the first time, I was not seeking anymore. I, I thought I, I had I had found what I was looking for. I was I was happy. I was very peaceful. So there there was not in a way uh, that he taught me something in words. Mostly we were just sitting together and in silence and looking into our eyes, our eyes closed. And I've been just bathing in his love. Mm. In his love, in Maharaji's love, his guru, in Karoli Baba, our love, essentially. Yeah. So Ramdas is this expression of love. And that's He was so great in words for for most of his life, you know, all his talks, no. Mm -hmm. But somehow this stroke later, no, kind of pulled that away from him, no. Yeah. For many years, he had great difficulties to articulate himself, no. So, and he expressed that also with me. It kind of forced him even deeper in, no, to deeper surrender and, and to find that okay, there is even. There's even more to that, no, to of more of letting go. So so I feel for those 20 years of what it was after the stroke, there was this constant surrender, this this this, this letting go of myself and and surrendering myself to his guru. And, his, and in this case to Maharaji, which is of course just pure consciousness in me. So, and then he he just vibrated this law. Yeah. It's just you know, yeah, we were just, we were, I just loved him so much. Mm. It's hard to put into words. It's weird too because I love Ram Das as well. I never met him. It's like, how can That's I? Right. That's how, right. how is that possible? But I feel so much love from this guy just from recordings or reading his words. I'm like, wow, I feel the love from that. I can't imagine in person but he would probably say it doesn't matter <laughs> right or something along those lines as long as you feel it that's all that matters and uh yeah you see it's not ram das love it's universal love it's yeah. unconditional love mm -hmm. that had the chance to land deeply in his avatar so to speak Mm. So the avatar was vibrating that love, but this love is not limited to this avatar, even mm. though it was deeply you no know, penetrated, the love penetrated his avatar deeply. It was not limited to this avatar. So the love, this in a way, it's one universal love, but every guru, every truly authentic teacher that has not only recognized or realized that, but really what I call embodied or integrated, no? Mm -hmm. to, into all our cells, almost we could say, that it really penetrates all of our being. Yeah. Then it comes, because this universal love then comes in a way, 
it comes with a particular flavor. Know that why Ram Das has a bit of a different flavor than Ram Maramana Maharshi or something. Mm. Uh, it's the same universal love, and and the love is the same, but. So and that flavor, that is the the magic in a way that remains. Yeah. It's like the love is still here, even now when we speak about it, we can feel it in our hearts. No, he's here. Yeah. He's with us. This, this this pure love is there, and there it has this this Ram Das flavor and and Ram Das flavor a bit mixed maybe with Maharaji also because he's always there when there is Ram Das. No, mm-hmm. and and these guys are just such amazing expressions of pure love. So. So it has, in that sense, then nothing to do anymore with this physical form. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. And so he's still available to us as a teacher. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what he would say about Maharaji, is that even after he left his body, he actually felt closer to him. And uh, man, I kind of feel that. After Ram Dass left his body in 2020, was it 2020, 2019? um some... 2019 december 2019 i remember exactly oh. i was in Tiruman Man- and i felt it exactly as yeah so, it's like it hit me too I got in touch and i got and exactly and it's it, it enhanced our relationship it's exactly my experience yeah it's like um yeah so i think that's the the testament to what we just said it's like you don't this love this universal love doesn't have to be constrained to a body and if anything once uh once the flavor of the body transitions it gets greater you know somehow some way this love enters into the beings that it was loved by and um it's like a transmission you know i see it almost as like a transmission through time from guru to disciple and it just keeps going it doesn't end it's a never ending love with an infinite amount of flavors <laughs> the flavors are which are us our avatars and that's the beauty of it man it never ends and uh hallelujah i don't have anything else to say that's that's the beauty of it man yeah and there we see if i may say that for me because what i what i'm particularly grateful for for rondas and maharaji when i was the second time with him there was one one particular moment in time where he kind of this transmission, you see, which is just the recognition in consciousness, in my understanding. But it feels like a transmission. No, it's, he, it's undescribable. He he brought me into my humanness. You see, it was always for me. It was kind of easy to to float up here. You know, I was my my center was kind of above my head. I had great difficulties to accepting my humanness all of my life mm-hmm. somehow. And then, so I've been also, of course, in the search of enlightenment, attracted by this, you know, get out of here and stuff. So that was not such a big thing, but to be human, yeah. that's, the, that's the real deal, man. To be this consciousness in the human form and to live that. Yep. freedom to live and express that love in every moment and to not buy into the fear of the conditioning of the mind and, and the conditioned feelings you know and he really transmitted to me it's like i'm giving you my guru boom and it just hit my heart and i had like an operation for one week i had this open chest you know and this 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 love was pouring you know and mm. it really kind of pulled me into my body and then i felt really that's where the journey really began wow. in this in this form you see so this and then to come in a way to this understanding and he is the expression of that for me mm. and it's in a way what i'm sharing what's somehow evolving somehow just by talking about these things that that this consciousness this pure consciousness and our conscious, our our humanness are actually one. Mm. The, the true non-dual understanding is not that there is this non-dual consciousness, you know, and this all here, the world, this body, all of that is not real, right? It's true in a way, of course. But, 
that's not what what because that consciousness already knows that it's <laughs> yeah. already free it's been always free it doesn't it doesn't need a human body to recognize that right it knows itself it always knows itself you no know? but to bring consciousness and humanness together there you have then this pure love pouring out and, and really emanating and and like a flu you no know? this perfume you no know? mm. <laughs> touching touching the people and, and seeing that potential that is in us as consciousness to to live through this avatar mm -hmm. as this as this expression of the pure love yeah well said wow yeah through this avatar through the body not in spite of the body we live fluidly in all the comings and goings of our body and yeah, that's uh, something I feel Ramdas embodied. I think one of his main teachings was just him being him. He was very vulnerable in his, all of his lectures. He was very human. And I think that's what he ultimately brought to the West as a sort of humanity to spirituality. And he didn't make it over lofty, even though sometimes he would get out there, but he would always joke. Like I feel as though in his talks, he knew when he was getting a little too out there and he'd throw a joke in there to kind of come back down and ground, you know? That's what I appreciate about Ram Dass so much is uh, his comedic sense and not taking himself too seriously or his teachings too seriously, you know, keeping right. us all grounded. Uh, I think that was a, a big part of his his life altogether and what he brought to the West overall was just um, being relatable. You know, essentially just being relatable and making spirituality relatable for all of us yes yeah just walking each other home that's, that's it <laughs> exactly